And the big question many are now wondering is how close are we to finding a solution to the outbreak and how long can this go on for? Joining us now is the person leading the charge to try to find a solution here in the U.S., Dr. Andre Khalil from the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Dr. Khalil, first off, I know you're busy, so thank you for taking the time to speak to us. Thanks for having me. How far along are we in developing a drug to treat COVID-19? So we, you know, we, we decided to take a, a little bit of a different approach this time. We designed the clinical trial uh, to be available to different drugs. So we, the trial that we designed with the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, is a trial that uh, will be what you call randomized adaptive trials. So the trial will be able to test several different drugs sequentially. The first drug that we're going to test is uh, Rindesivir. So this is the medication that has already a, uh, a track record of uh, a uh, viral replication inhibition. So we, we looked into in vitro and animal studies uh, and found that this medication has this ability to inhibit the, the viral replication. So the idea here is to test this medication as the first one in the trial. So half of the patients will receive uh, Rindesivir and the other half is going to receive the placebo. And the idea here is to run this trial as fast as possible uh, to find if this medication works. If this medication works, we're going we're gonna to work in what's called an adaptive process. The medication will uh, be transferred to the control arm and we're going to bring a new medication and test a second medication and then we can test a third medication and so forth. So the idea here is to have this clinical trial running uh, as long as possible. We have now a plan to run for at least three years uh, and we're going to test uh, multiple drugs. Uh, hopefully we're going to find a, you know, one or more therapies that can, um, uh, in, can just improve the, the clinical symptoms and the survival of these patients with severe um, COVID-19. Very important to, to mention that the trial really is focused on the patients with a moderate and severe disease. Um, at, you know, as you know, 80%, 80 to 90% of the patients today will have just a mild disease. They will basically get cured uh, just on their own. They will not need any specific medications. Uh, the focus of this clinical trial is uh, to try to help the people that uh, need the most, the people that are going to have the severe disease the disease that yeah. affect the lungs and can cause pneumonia. So what can you tell us about the participants in this trial as well as the coronavirus patients that you're already treating? So the, you know, I cannot tell you any specifics about the first patient on the trial, but I can tell you that the patient, uh, it keeps improving uh, and actually was discharged from uh, from the biocontainment unit back to the quarantine uh, yesterday. So meaning that the patient really had a significant improvement being in the clinical trial. We, as, as I mentioned before, it's a randomized trial, double blind, so we don't know which medication for the patient received the placebo or, or the active drug, but the patient improved and the patient was discharged from the hospital. We have other uh, 14 patients that are in the quarantine. That means they they do not require to be uh, admitted to the hospital because they don't have any severe disease. They all have mild disease. So at this point, uh, patients are doing well. They're improving. Uh, but we are observing very carefully because what we've noticed with this infection that sometimes uh, it takes about a week, a week and a half for uh, the disease progress and you know getting to the lungs and cause pneumonia. So we have to keep very close attention to each one of these patients. That's good to know. And I know that your facility also dealt with the Ebola virus outbreak in 2014. So far, how does your experience with these two scenarios compare? I think they compare differently, but uh, we, you know, we learned so much uh, in 2014 uh, through both the clinical aspects and research aspects. For instance, the trial that we have now, the clinical trial that we have now, is uh, basically is, is being built on what we learned uh, with the trials that we did during the Ebola outbreak. So we are much better uh, doing this type of research nowadays, trying to bring new therapies because we we are learning uh, on the time that we went through the 2000 and fourth outbreak so definitely it's a, a learning curve uh, but the lessons we learned in 2014 are definitely being very useful for uh, what's happening today all right dr andre khalil from the university of nebraska medical center we appreciate your time doctor as well as the work that you're doing